I've had dozens and dozens of people mail me and you know, say, oh, reading about uh, your anxiety on the site has made me go and talk to my doctor and I'm feeling much better. And I've even had mails from wives and girlfriends who said, oh, my boyfriend read Penny Arcade and now he's on Lexapro and he feels so much better. Thank you. Like, and so we should do an episode of the show about it. We should. I apparently have face finder technology as well. And I do. I want to say, like, the whole thing that you posted about your anxiety and everything, me and my brothers had that, and it really helped. Oh. Seriously, man? Yeah, I mean, I I had to have somebody talk to me about it, so. Just just hearing about, like, that fact that you did all this with even having that problem. Yeah, and it it really helps. I mean, it'll change your life. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, have a good weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it, I think that it's helped some people, and that's you know. Well, for, I think the main thing is that it can appear in so many different ways that you might not recognize. You might not recognize what's underneath it. It's like we have in our, in our minds, we have an idea of depression, and that idea is is referenced more or less in the sorts of commercials where they sell the kinds of drugs we take, and it's, there's a monochrome tone. It's almost She's always stirring a, her tea. It's almost always a woman. She's, she's looking out a she's looking out a window. A There's cat. no one out there. Nothing is happening. It is only great. You know what I'm saying? It's like snowing. Exactly. And it's like until they take the drug and then it's like But that that's not exactly what we're talking about. Like you can be depressed and the way that it will the way that it will affect your family and the people you know is that you are funny. And we don't think of that as you know what I'm saying? Like but if that's your coping mechanism, if, you're, if you're, the way you cope with depression and anxiety is to make jokes, you know, that's, right. that's what we did. Imagine that. Yeah. Imagine a person who had created that mechanism. I mean, I remember the first time I got over to, to Mike's house, Mike's apartment back in 2000. Um, what was 2002 2003 or something like that and uh, he had explained to me that he needed to uh, step on every bath mat in the bathroom no matter where he went like he had to it was like a compulsive thing and I was like oh okay but in my mind I'm thinking wow I'm dealing with crazy people one of I mean every everybody is different in their you know neurosis everyone has different little quirks and one of mine was a fear of uh, drugs and medicine in general. <laughs> um, and the thing that finally did it for me is I wanted to take my wife to Paris for her 30th birthday. And I couldn't, there's no way I could do that uh, without medication. I mean, and so I, what I did is, yeah, for the most part, I made myself uh, buy the tickets. And then I was like, okay, well now I have to do it. Mike went in to the doctor and, and got a prescription and and changed his life. Yeah, and that was surprisingly easy, you know, much easier than I had expected. Yeah, I mean, the big concern was whether it would take the spark away, was whether that craziness that, that they were, that, that was them, would be gone because of, uh, of this drug. Well, right? I mean, you, you start to think of like, well, the reason I am this way <clears throat> is because of all my weird neurosis. Like, the reason I am a creative person it's because I'm a little bit crazy. And you can still be a little bit crazy, but you don't have to be depressed well, and anxious all the exactly. time. Exactly, and, and, and the reality is that you're never going to survive uh, unless you get a little crazy. Yeah. All right, I mean, like, Seal said it. He said it best. And he was and he was right, I don't know, what are we it's talking about? It's as true today as it was. <laughs> I forget, I forget what we were talking about. When Seal said it. <laughs> you know, Mike was the one that actually said it. Mike Krahuluk said, I just want you to know I'm going on this, and if it changes things, I'm gonna go off it. Like, he was sort of aware of what was at stake, and like, that's not something that I could have ever told him, but I'm sure glad he said it, because that, that made things a lot easier on me. That sounds like Robert. He internalizes a lot. Yeah. What are you guys talking about? Lexapro. Oh. Yeah. Talking about Jerry, I remember when, when I made Jerry, when I made the appointment oh, you, for Jerry. You made him go to the doctor, that's right. I was like, you ready for Lex Pro? He's like, yeah, I think so. I was like, great, you're you have a doctor's appointment in an hour. <laughs> 15 minutes. 
Yeah. I remember because it was uh, it was right down the road. You remember, like you yeah. go down Safeway, you just hit down in the road, and that was yeah. the doctor's office. Yeah, he needed it. I just I had I sort of existed in this cycle where, if I was having a good day, I mean I could guarantee, like mathematically guarantee, like I think I could model how bad the next few days were going to be. It got to the point where I could sort of recognize that that there was this there, there was a kind of psychological mathematics at play that I didn't feel like I was in control of at all and it would, it would and when it went down it just went it went really it went very far down I was able to discover exciting new bottoms each time like in the abyss yeah you sort of keep floating down yeah and you see it, the light I, but I never had any benevolent aliens there was just uh, the ever problem. greater darkness yeah Robert's good. Kinda. Yeah, I guess down there in the bottom of the abyss was Robert. Yeah. And Lexapro. And you're, you're we floated that. back up on their backs. If, if, if we're maintaining the abyss theme. Yeah. It really has changed our day to day and it has made all of our lives better, not just theirs. And that's, that's how it happened with me. I wish that I could say there was a, a romantic European interlude. Well, I had been trying to get you to, to take it. Well, I've been trying to get you to take drugs, too, but, you know. Well, you were trying to get me to take illegal drugs. I was trying to get you to take awesome drugs. It's completely different. I wanted you to regulate your anxiety. Yeah. And you wanted me to feel like I had a total body erection. I mean, that's not... Who's right? Well, Jerry, as far as his recreational drug use, most of it is referencing his his past, but otherwise, no, it's not like he walks in the office, you know, fucking tripping out or anything like that. That'd be sweet. <laughs> I'd always been fascinated by uh, the idea that that consciousness had a chemical component, and I really wanted to get baked. I really wanted. <laughs> I really wanted to figure that out. I mean, I wanted to. I wanted to figure that out. I wanted to play around with that. I enjoyed doing it, but I think it's, in retrospect, it's almost certainly medication. It's just not prescription medication. Like he's, he's always been very open about his, uh, about how liberal he is in terms of uh, talking about drug use, about his prior drug use. But also what's nice is that Mike is really the balance to that. Like Mike has never done drugs, is very anti-drug. Has this experience changed your perception of recreational drugs anymore? Uh, no, that's, that is uh, deeper. That is deeper for me, it turns out, than just uh, like anxiety. Um, growing up, um, my brother uh, overdosed and died of a uh, drug overdose. And I think that um, sort of watching him progress to that point uh, really fucked me up. Like, I saw what it did to him. You know, I saw where he started, and I saw where he ended up, and uh, saw what it did to my parents, and then, you know, what it eventually did to all of us. And, you know, I know it's completely ridiculous to think that if I smoke a joint that I will then overdose on some drug and die, but... Um, I think you're allowed that. Yeah, I mean, there's there's things that happen in your brain that, like connections that get made that you just don't have any control over, right? There may not be a pill for that. Yeah. 